I don't even wish I could tell you guys all of what is going on because I feel like you're my best friend in my family and I <laughs> dreams that fade away like we're all just lost at sea. Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So I'm filming in a different part of my house today. So I was just crying. I've been the past five days crying. And I just want to say that because usually I'm very happy and I have like my YouTube personality and I just had to redo all of my makeup because I cried again. Anyway, so if I look like I was just crying and I'm not happy, that's why I'm not happy. I'm really confused. So today I'm going to talk about the millennial concept. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. So people are basically saying that they can be a Christian, they can practice their faith, they can know God, they can have spiritual epiphanies, they can grow spiritually without being part of a church. There's a huge decline amongst millennials in attending churches. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I could make a whole video about why we stop going to church, but this is for millennials. This is why I think that going to church, committing to a church and being religious is really, really important. The most important thing I like to ask people when they say that they believe in God or they're spiritual, but they don't go to church is what kind of God do you believe in? What kind of Christianity do you believe in? The purpose of having the Bible, the purpose of having a church is it defines doctrine. It defines who God is. And so there's a lot of people who want to just you know, go out into the woods and pray. And I think it's good to have emotion and a personal relationship with God. But if that's not grounded in anything theological and black and white about who God is, then it lacks value. You can't say that you love God, but then not say who God is. Something I've said in a lot of videos is that to love someone, you have to know them. You're able to love someone more the more that you know them. So you're able to grow emotionally in a love for God with knowledge of Christianity. Essentially, I think that if you see it as spiritual and not religious, you're going to have less of a theological, intellectual component to your faith, and you're gonna be focusing less on how to live and who God is, and instead focusing more on your emotions and how you feel within your faith. And this is from Acts 20 verse seven. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people and because he intended to leave the next day, kept on talking until midnight. So this church had a really, really long sermon. But the point is we can see in the New Testament, the first generation of Christians, the early church met together formally every single week. Originally, they were meeting in house churches, then it became more public church buildings. But the point is they were officially meeting together every single week. And we need to trust Jesus that what he established for us to have as church is something we need for our faith. I also think of religion like having a boat. All the churches each have a boat and we're all floating towards heaven on the boats. And you can choose to just be in the water, swimming around, going between different boats. Maybe you're in the water with your five best friends and you talk about theology together during the week, but you feel like you don't need a boat. You're fine just in the water. And I think that sometimes, you know, the water will be calm and you'll be fine and you'll stay a Christian, you'll stay afloat. But then if there's a really crazy storm in your life, if something happens that's very traumatic that causes you to start to doubt your faith, not having the foundation of the boat, of other people who have gone through the same struggles, of other people who have answers to your intellectual reasons to not believing in the resurrection. Not having that boat will cause you to drown and lose your faith. And I think it is possible to go about it on your own, to read theology on your own, to read through the Bible, to read commentaries, all of these really important Christian books through the years. But I think that you need to rely on people who are more educated than you, who are smarter than you, who have researched this more, lived longer, have more life wisdom, and you need to go to them to get information on how to understand God and how to understand your faith. The thing I love about sermons at church is the preacher spent a lot of time researching into particular passages and he gives all of this etymology and cultural context and connects it in different ways that you wouldn't have been able to do on your own. This is another reason why I love being a part of a small group or a Bible study. I was at a Bible study this morning and we were just talking about how to make visitors, new people to Christianity, feel welcome at church. And it was this giant discussion and everyone, some people were crying during it and everyone had so many different ideas. And that's something that on your own, you might not be able to think of. And without having, you know, 15 other voices in a class or in a small group, you wouldn't get those perspectives. There's a lot of people in older generations who, when they hear about <laughs> 
spiritual and not religious, the joke is that you say you go into the woods to pray, but you never actually pray. Like people who say they're spiritual and not religious, like the joke is they're not actually practicing their faith. And I'm not at all judging anyone. Like I think definitely some people do like pray on their own, but are not a part of a church officially. But I think that in general, it's really good having a reminder every single week where you hear people praying, where you're reading scripture together, you're taking communion, you're seeing people be baptized. You're just in a room of other Christians worshiping God and remembering the fundamentals of your faith. And having that reminder every single week is just a habit that you need to make a part of your life. And also something my dad always says is everyone has their own personal canon, which is something I sort of agree with in that everyone has specific books of the Bible they go to again and again that they tend to read a lot and read over again. For me, my personal canon would be Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Ephesians, John, Revelation, 1 Peter, Proverbs, Job. These are the books of the Bible that I go back to again and again and again. And so going to church, a lot of churches have a liturgy and throughout the year you'll go through the entire Bible, different parts of the Bible. Same with sermon series. You'll look from the Old and the New Testament, all the different books of the Bible. And then later during the week, you can look back and read that obscure passage from 1 Kings or Deuteronomy Deuteronomy or Galatians or Mark, you know what I mean? It helps you navigate around the entire Bible. And if you're just doing it on your own, you may get stuck at reading the same books again and again and again. A lot of people say that they just have theology discussions with their friends. And I went to a Christian university and a lot of my friends are really strong in their faith. And we do have a ton of theology discussions. But what I find is that having a small group Bible study, being a part of a Bible class before church, like Sunday school, or being in a small group is that it is very focused on one particular topic topic. And during the whole time, you hear the perspectives of different types of people of different ages or different personalities, different races, different genders, and having this diversity of ideas in talking about how to live out the faith, how you're experiencing different parts of the Bible, your individual walk with God, seeing all these perspectives and being in a group together is something that will grow your faith, teach you so much about God in a way that doing it on your own could never do. Formalized Bible class, formalized small groups, formalized sermons or homilies, they will grow your faith in such a strong way, in a way that reading your Bible on your own, reading books on your own will never do because it is this multiplicity of perspectives. I found with myself when I stopped going to church every single week, I was still going to my small group Bible study, but when I stopped going to the church service every single week, when I had really bad depression and sometimes couldn't wake up for church, didn't have the energy to go, I found that that's when my faith was really, really shaken when I was not attending church every single week. And I talked about this, I made a video how I almost became agnostic, I almost gave up my faith because I was not going to church every single week. And just having that reminder where you're there with everyone, where you take communion, you remember why you are a Christian, you remember that Jesus died, buried, and was resurrected, you're able to almost re-say your covenant vows to Christ in being a Christian. That is something that Jesus established for us where every single week the Christians met together to worship God. And I think that we need to take Jesus really seriously in that he established things for our benefit. And it's so foolish to think that this individualistic culture that began only a few centuries ago for most of the history of the world, every single society has been collectivist. It's been about depending on other people. It's been a bigger focus on community. So it's a brand new concept to have individualism and to think that we'll be fine on our own and our faith just by ourselves, just with our friend group having sporadic theology conversations. I think that's prideful and foolish and I've definitely fallen into that trap. A lot of my friends have all millennials have the tendency to feel like we can be spiritual and religious without church. And I think even if you do not know anyone at your church, I'm an introvert. Sometimes I hate talking to people after church and I just want to get out. So I don't look like I want to talk to anyone. I go in and I just get out and I don't talk to anyone. But just going to the service every single week and hearing the message and doing worship, communion, saying the creed, all of that is so integral and foundational to strengthen your faith and help you grow in God. I love you guys so much. If you're a millennial, comment below what you think and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.